You're training for a marathon? I'm running four of them back to back. Well, really more like hiking. It turns out that the experts on Let's Run were right. I am old and slow, so it's time to switch to trail running. Now that I'm a serious trail runner, I'll need to change some of the ways that I approach running. Instead of avoiding hills because they will slow down my pace on Strava, I will seek out epic climbs because now I brag about vert on Strava. Lightweight, carbon-plated racing shoes just won't cut it anymore. I need stable shoes with Vibram lugs. I used to have meticulous routines when it came to racing, but now I dream of a day when I won't know what time the race starts, and I just have to wait for a conch shell to blow. All right, time to go. During races, my nutrition was dialed. I knew exactly how many grams of carbs and sodium I would take every 30 minutes. Now, I just plan to eat pizza at races. You know what's crazy? They don't even have aid stations every mile. There could be like eight miles between an aid station and they have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Trail running still has a lot of gear and sometimes races make you carry all of your gear. It's like the opposite of having pro bottle tables. Running vest, an inReach, a headlamp, a backup headlamp, a bivy, waterproof pants, a wind jacket, hiking poles. Ooh, this pack must weigh like 10 pounds. Oh well. When I run an ultra marathon, in addition to the gear and the food, I'll need to book an Airbnb so that my crew and pacers have a place to stay. One thing hasn't changed. You can't put a price on epicness. I'll hang up my Boston jacket because now I have a belt buckle to show everyone that I'm really skilled at walking really far distances really slowly for a long period of time. Importantly, I'll need to change my persona on social media to reflect that I'm now a trail runner. My social media will now feature the most epic, gnarliest mountain climbs that I can find and I'll drive three hours into the mountains to get that content. Yeah, I won't talk about flat, net downhill races anymore. I'll talk about epic mountain lines. Ah, oh, gone are the glory days of making anonymous, politically incorrect comments on Let's Run. Luckily, there's no shortage of trail running podcasts. Oh, rad. A new episode of Dylan Bowman's podcast. I used to avoid alcohol for like 10 weeks before a race, but now I'll seek out the very best craft beer. Instead of hero worshiping Kipchoge, I'll find new heroes like Killian Journey. Killian does chemo, so I need to also. It'll be difficult, but it's time to trade in my Tracksmith kit and CLA cap for a button-down shirt and a trucker hat. It's been difficult to come to terms with the fact that I'm now somebody who spends their time hiking and eating, but it's been rewarding. I spend a lot less time obsessing over race conditions, what I'm eating, how much my shoes weigh, and whether or not I'm at race weight. I no longer get stuck in an endless cycle of trying to shave seconds off of my marathon PR because every trail race is so different, the times are not really comparable. Besides, I'm really just out there for the epic views. I've got new goals that aren't the Boston Marathon. It's Western States, UTMB, Hard Rock, and luckily, getting into those races isn't really dependent on how fast you are. It's just being lucky in the lotteries. 
I'm really grateful that I won't have to go on to this next part of my life's journey alone. I'll have pacers who, for some reason, think it's enjoyable to walk all night with me for eight to 10 hours. As a serious trail runner, I have to dedicate a lot less and sacrifice a lot less, but people will still be really impressed because they just can't fathom somebody walking for 100 miles. It doesn't matter how long it takes me to run 100 miles, just as long as the race has burritos.